the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with and your spirit. spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. I think there are more people here than there are at a weekend mass. Only Leo, I think, has the power to bring all these people together. Not only that, but all these priests, too. I think there are more here than we have at our prison mass as well. There is a saying in the Gospel, Jesus says, do not take your place of honor. If you do, so they make love to you and say, up that next time we for you. Please go to the back. If you sit at the back and you humble yourself, somebody will say to you, please go up front. Leo, you are the man of honor. Come up front. <laughs> reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, 
you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks. When Leo came to me and said that uh, the ceremony was just a page long, I said, Leo, this is going to take all of five minutes. He might go stretch it out for ten. If I preach for a half hour, okay, I'm going to be longer. I said, but I think given the fact that so many people are coming, and this is something special, and given that you are a good Catholic man, I said, I think we should do it in the context of a Mass. So he, he agreed. And that's why for those of you who thought otherwise, that's why we changed it at the last minute to a mess. There's another change too, and that is in the gospel for today. The mass today is being celebrated in honor of St. Lawrence, the deacon and martyr. But uh, and while everything is taken from the normal parts of the mass, which should be for this celebration today, this is feast day, the gospel is the only part that we're changing, and there's a reason for it. Leo himself chose this gospel and asked for it to be used. And when I heard what gospel he chose and why, I said, well, that's fine. How more appropriate would that gospel have to be for today? The one about Jesus saying, let the children come to me. And it is perfect because Leo obviously works with the 
And we all know he does a marvelous job in that. Care for, for children has always been a concern. And obviously, even today, we know that it's a huge concern. There's so much abuse in the world today against children, against uh, children in, in all aspects. But it's not just a problem for today. It's always been a problem. And that's one reason why in Old Testament scripture, God so clearly has concern for two types of people, the widow and the orphan. So obviously, children have always been a concern for God and their well-being. And today, we are honoring this man here who does just that. He takes care of the children. The ones who are downtrodden, the ones who uh, are taken advantage of, even in, in prison. You know? We know that life there is not easy. And Tom can verify that, the one who's in charge of the whole incarceration ministry for our diocese. You know, it's not easy. You know, they hurt each other. And also sometimes even those that work in the jails or the prisons may not necessarily be kind to them, look down upon them as second-class citizens. And so it's important for someone like Leo to be in that kind of ministry where he takes care of God's little ones. Not only is this gospel perfect because it does speak about letting the children come to me, but tied to that is another gospel where Jesus says, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you have to become like children. Now I mean this with all graciousness and sincerity and, and respect to you. I don't know anyone who's more like a child than an animal. And I mean that's a compliment. And we also know that Leo has a heart that is very uh, compassionate and loving. And the first reading says, God loves a cheerful giver. And we know that Leo gives cheerfully, constantly, you know, with a smile on his face. But besides that, Leo has a spirit of humility. And he does have that childlike personality. Very simple, very loving, very kind, and very childlike. And if anyone is getting the kingdom of heaven, it'll be this guy. So today, Leo, I know it's going to be brief, and so I will conclude. We honor you, and we are glad that you have given your life in service to God, in service to his church, and now to add another group, not only the independent children, but also in service to the Franciscan community as a third order member. And so I ask you, Please come forward as we celebrate your initiation today. And let us pray to the one who guides us and rules us and cares for us, the Father of heaven. O Lord our God, you have shown us your wisdom and your love. You have called us to follow you. May Leo, who asked to join the family of St. Francis, be inspired and strengthened by the grace and the support of the San Damiano Franciscan community. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Leo, why have you come and what do you request? Reverend Father and the members of the San Damiano Franciscan community, the Franciscan family of brothers has inspired me to inquire into their way of life so that in time I may become a member of the Franciscan family of St. Damiano, and thus serve God and man more perfectly. And I, on the part of the San Damiano Francisco community, accept your request and welcome you into their midst. They promise you their support and encouragement by their prayers, instruction, and good example. If you continue in your desire to be a member of the Franciscan family of San Damiano, you will be able to join them and become a full and active member of the San Damiano Francisco community. I now ask one of our Franciscans, Father Trina, to come forward to bless and present Leo with the cross. Receive this cross of Christ as a sign of your dedication to Jesus Christ, his church, and the family of Francis. May the Lord bless you and keep you, Leo. May he turn his face to you and have mercy on you. May he 
turn his countenance to you and give you peace. And may the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. I now ask Leo uh, and those who are bringing up the gifts. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, petition. Father Jameson, uh, do the petition first. Please rise and we present our petitions to our Father. Conception to the time of natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our diocesan prison ministries, most especially those that minister to juveniles, that the Holy Spirit will inspire them to bring God's misguided children closer to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Leo, as he begins his vocational journey to becoming a professed Franciscan brother, we pray to the Lord. Lord, and hear our prayer. For the staff and villages of holy name of Jesus Parish, that they will continue to look after and provide for community needs in their physical jurisdiction and beyond, we pray to the Lord. Lord, and hear our prayer. We ask for all these things. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offerings we jointly make on the feast day of St. Lawrence, and grant that they become a help to our salvation. Be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, St. Lawrence, 
poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope, Gerald our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly implore you, Lord, that the homage of dutiful service, which we render on the Feast of St. Lawrence, may bring us an increase of your saving grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do you see that I ask Father Andrew to come forward and talk briefly on Francis' voice? Leo asked me to say a few words about St. Francis and the Franciscan family. I have to say, in the presence of Father Chinner, I feel deeply unqualified to say, I'm sure we all know the most inspiring story of a young man who, forsaking his wealth, his relative affluence, in 1209, in the ruined chapel of San Damiano, found his calling to God, a calling which brought him, as he expressed it, a sense of great joy, a sense of vocation, and a sense of that great call to poverty. And from those first moments in that chapel at San Damiano, the spark of the Holy Spirit and the inspiration of St. Francis led to great things. Within 10 years, there were over 5,000 friars preaching a renewed sense of mission in the church in Europe. Friars went out to all the university towns and cities to inspire a new generation of vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, a new vocation to serve God. I suppose my qualification to speak about St. Francis and the Franciscan family comes from my great fortune in having been a theology student in Rome. I remember in my final year in Rome, we had a college trip to the Valley of Rieta. Rieta is where St. Francis spent his remaining years. I was privileged to visit the monastery at Columbano, where St. Francis spent his last few years, where he cauterized his own eyes because of the blindness that inflicted him. I was able to visit the grotto where St. Francis set up the first crib at midnight and preached the nativity of the Christ child. Leo, you are joining a wonderful family in the Franciscan order. We wish you great, great, that great sense of joy and great sense of vocation which inspired the original St. Francis. Thank you all for coming.